Please be seated. As with many things in life, our church and our expression of faith has a lot to do with relationships. And it makes me smile when we have the readings from uh, Isaiah and uh, Romans, and we hear about the root, the stump of Jesse. And I have a very good friend, an old friend from New Orleans. In fact, he was my first friend when I moved down there as a young college student. And he has a nickname for himself in regards to our relationship. He calls himself my Judah root. <laughs> He was, uh, we, I was Baptist at the time, and, and I met him at the St. At Charles Avenue Baptist Church. And uh, we're still very good friends to this day, and he's now retired and uh, comes to New York fairly regularly, so we get to see each other, which is always a treat. But that relationship makes me think about God's plan for me and for all of us, really, and how certain people come into our lives at certain times, and how because of the influence of these people, we go one way or the other. And maybe not in the moment, but later can look back and think about, gosh, what would have, how would my life have been different if I hadn't met this person? What would my life have been like if I hadn't made this decision? And of course, we believe and know that God created us with minds to think and hearts to feel. And he gave us the gift, the great gift, and the responsibility of free will. We have agency in our lives, and while we, we pray for God's guidance and we believe that God has a guiding hand in our, our, in our lives, we do make decisions. And those decisions have consequences. And Happily, I think, in my case, uh, meeting this friend that introduced me to other friends who introduced me to the Episcopal Church, and it's like that old uh, shampoo commercial, and she told two friends, and she told two friends, and so on, and so on, and here I am, <laughs> preaching to you today. So this, this idea of relationships and, uh, and the influence they have on us and the directions they can take us in our life is fascinating to me. And this time of year, this season of year in our church, is all about relationships as well. Jesus, in his ministry, of course, is the ultimate example of relationship because he is part of the Godhead and he becomes incarnate. The creator becomes the created and takes part in our lives and intertwines himself in our lives, even now, even as he is enthroned in heaven. But you have to think about this Advent season where uh, we're, we're talking this week, we're seeing the story of John the Baptist, another good Baptist, out in the wilderness, baptizing people, forgiving them of their sins. We as Christians believe him to be the last in the great line of prophets, the forerunner of Christ. And you often see him depicted with Christ in art. And you can, of course, see that here in our own church. If you come around and look at the, the uh, painting on the wall with uh, St. Mary and two little babies at her feet. One, of course, is her son, Jesus. The other, who is more fully clothed, is uh, John the Baptist. And you can tell that because, of course, he's wearing a little uh, camel hair, <laughs> camel skin toga. Uh, because we know from the uh, readings that he was wearing camel hair and a, a belt of leather and he ate locusts and wild honey. He sounds like a very odd and interesting person. Someone that people were interested in, you know, a celebrity for his time. So everybody, all of Jerusalem and Judea and the countryside around the Jordan, all were coming to see who is this out in the wilderness. In fact, we don't hear this today, but Jesus uh, rebukes them. It says, what, what did you come out to see? Uh, a bruised reed? Uh, a, a, a charlatan? No. He acclaims uh, John as the forerunner, the forerunner of him, the Messiah. And John is often asked, are you the Messiah or should we look for another? And he is always adamant, I am not he. 
one who is coming is greater than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. And indeed, in the story of the baptism of John, he protests initially when Jesus comes and asks for the waters of baptism. He says, it is you who should baptize me. And you come and ask me? I'm not worthy. But Jesus insists. And that is the basis for our relationship with Jesus. We are baptized into Christ. Worthy to administer the waters of baptism. None of us are worthy to receive it. But it is a gift that is given to us to, by Jesus Christ through the church so that we all become one body, so that we become brothers and sisters, so that we have this relationship while we are here on this earth with one another and with our church and our community and with God and in the life to come, life everlasting, life of the life, as we say in the burial rite, of perfect service, going from strength to strength at that heavenly banquet. And of course, the other great example of relationship in this season is the patron of our church, Our Lady, St. Mary, who accepts God's invitation to become an integral part in his plan for the salvation of humankind. Imagine being faced with that decision and that relationship. I don't know what I would have said if an angel appeared and said, your life is about to change. Could you imagine? One of my favorite depictions of this is a painting that hangs in the Philadelphia Museum of Art by Henry Oswa Tanner. And oftentimes you see the Annunciation depicted as it is above, beautifully above our own altar with an angel coming to Mary who's of course in prayer in her Italian villa. But uh, I, I can't take credit for that joke. That, was, uh, that belongs to Bishop, late Bishop Charles Jenkins. May his memory be a blessing. But in this painting that I'm referring to, there's a young woman sitting on her bed, on her bedside with her hands folded in her lap. And instead of an angel with wings and beautiful vestments and a, handing her a lily, there's just this sort of shaft of light. And instead of a quizzical or a frightened look on her face, she has a knowing and understanding look as she faces her destiny. And so it is through her gift of herself that we have the gift of being brothers and sisters in relationship, direct relationship with Jesus Christ. And so as we continue this uh, Advent season, consider this idea of relationships, all those relationships in your life, some that you cherish, some may be damaged and need attention. Some may be lost because of death. But know that in this web of life and baptism, that we believe it all goes on. Life is changed, not ended. And so while we are here, we have but a little time to gladden the hearts of others. And we work towards that. We work towards ever closer relationship with our God. And we pray for those we love but see no longer as we remain in relationship with them and as we anticipate being with them in eternity. This is all what Advent is about. Not just the birth of a child, but about the whole spectrum of human life, of God's Big plan for cause, big plan for human salvation. Everything from cradle to grave and to resurrection. This is the story of Advent. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>